In this tutorial, we are going to solve a question under Newton's laws of motion. So um, here's a question for you. A 2.5 kg medical equipment is initially at rest on a horizontal surface. A horizontal force F of magnitude 6 newtons and a vertical force P are then applied to the equipment as shown below. The coefficient of friction for the equipment and the surface uh, mu s is equal to 0 0.4 and mu k is equal to 0 0.25. Determine the magnitude of the friction force acting on the equipment if the magnitude of P is uh, part A, 8 newtons, B, 10 newtons, and C, 12 newtons. So initially they are just asking us to find the uh, friction force. But see, we have got two things here. Two things are involved. When an object is moving, then there is friction. The friction which is present when an object is mo moving is what we call the kinetic friction. Then, when an object is not moving, the object is just at rest. If there is friction there, the friction which is present at that particular point is um, static friction. Now, we have been given the uh, coefficient of uh, static friction and coefficient of uh, a kinetic friction. Our goal is to determine the friction force, the magnitude of the friction force. But remember, we have two things here. Now, our goal here, we have first to find, in each, uh, in each case, we have to find the f uh, static friction. Now, why are we saying that we have to find the static friction? It's just simple. We have been given the force. The force which was being applied here, it is uh, 6.0 newtons. Okay? So, if we find the static friction, once we discover that the static friction is greater than the applied force, then we are going to conclude to say this object was moving. Okay, we are going to conclude to say this object was not moving. Therefore, the friction which is going to be present at that point is going to be the static friction. Meaning that the answer which we are going to find, that is going to be our answer in that case. Okay? Now, if we discover to say, we find that the mu s is less than the applied force, then we are going to conclude to say, the object was, was moving. Now, if the object was moving, then we expect to have kinetic friction. Then we are going to find now kinetic friction. So, this is going just to give us a hint to say, do we have static friction or kinetic friction? Then if we don't have, if, if, if the mu s is greater than f, then we expect to have static friction. We remain there, that is going to be our answer. If we discover to say the mu s, the static friction is less than the, is less than the applied force, then we are going to conclude to say, in this case, the object is going to be moving. If the object is going to be moving, we expect to have kinetic friction. If there is kinetic friction, let's find that kinetic friction. So, meaning kinetic friction in that case is going to be our answer. Now, we know that friction force is given, uh, so we are going to start with uh, static friction. Static friction is given by mu s times the normal force. Now, how do we find the normal force in this case? To find the normal force, we can see here that we have three things involved. So we are going to have the forces which are acting in y direction we have got in. The downward force, which is the mg, which is the weight force. Then we also have the upward force, which is going to be the normal force. But we still have another force, which is p. So we are going to say the summation of the forces in y direction is going to give us the forces which are acting upward. We have got the normal force plus the P, then minus mg, which is pointing downward. I'm going to replace this one with zero because we, this object is going to be moving in x direction. So we don't have, the net force in y direction is going to be zero. So zero is going to be equal to the normal force plus the P minus mg. My goal is to find the P or the, no, uh, the, uh, the normal force, I'm going to shift these two guys to the left hand side. If I shift those two guys to the left side, we are going to discover to say, we are going to have 
uh, I'm going to shift mg, mg is going to be now mg instead of negative it's going to be positive because it has crossed the equal sign so this is going to be minus p has to be equal to the fn what it means here is um, where there is fn in this equation we are going to replace with what? this mg minus p that is going to be our general formula in this case so we are going to have the mu s the fs to be equal to mu s open brackets mg minus the p so this is going to be our general formula so this formula i'm going to put it here we have the fs to be equal to the mu s mg minus p now when we discover that we have friction force then it's going to be the mu k but we're going to have the same thing now see we want to find part a let's see what we're going to have so first we have to find the static friction that static friction that's uh, after finding the static friction that's when we're going to conclude to say we have got static friction or the kinetic friction if we we see to say the static friction is less than the applied force or is greater than the applied force so the friction the static friction is going to be the mu s mg minus the p we have been told that the mu s is 0 0.4 mass is 2.5 times 9.8 which is g minus the p we have been told that the p is 8 in that case so we're going to say 0 0.4 i'll start with what is in uh, in the brackets 2.5 times 9.8 answer i'm getting 24.5 minus 8 then i do this times 0 0.4 so the static friction which I'm getting is 6.6 6.6 newtons now let's conclude 6.6 newton is greater than the applied force therefore we expect to have static friction so we're going to say that since this is greater than the applied force we expect this object not to move so meaning that in this case if this object is not going to move meaning that um, the applied force is the, is equal to the static friction meaning that our friction force in this case is going to be 6 it's going to be the same as this one okay it's going to be 6 newtons because if the static friction is equal to the kinetic or is equal to the applied force then that object is not going to move now we have concluded to say the static friction is greater than the applied force we expect our friction force to be equal to the applied force so in this case this answer is just giving us a hint to say the friction force which is going to be present is going to be the static friction so static friction is going to be equal to the applied force for it not to move okay so in this case the answer is going to be the same as 6.0 newtons as simple as that now part 2 which is part b let's see what we're going to have we're going to use the same formula this f um this queen just to, to give us a hint to say what do we have is it the static friction or the kinetic friction so let's plug in the values 0 0.4 2.5 times 9.8 minus the p now we've been told that is 10 what would be our mu s in this case 2.5 times 9.8 i'm getting 24.5 minus 10 i'm getting 14.5 times 0 0.4 so this is giving me 5.5 .5 or 5.8 newtons now 5.8 newtons is less than so this fs the static friction is less than the applied force therefore we expect this object to be in motion because the applied force is greater than the, fric the the static friction so once the object is if this object is going to be in motion we expect to have the kinetic friction so this is just giving us a hint to say we have the kinetic friction therefore we reverse this and now find the what the static friction so the static friction that is going to be our our answer now in this case so we're going to say the fk the formula now is going to be this it's the same but we're just changing a few things so the mu k mg minus the p let's see 
So we have 0 0.25, that is our mu value, 2.5 times 9.8 minus the p is 10. So I'm going to have 2.5 times 9.8, I'm getting 24.5 minus 10, I'm getting 14.5, which was the same, times now 0 0.25. So now I'm getting the my friction force in this case the magnitude of the friction force is going to be 3.3.625 3 newtons which is the same as we can say 3.63 newtons as simple as that So in this case this is going to be our friction force for part A, for part B Now let's go to part C So part C we first need to find the static friction so that we see if the static friction is going to be greater or less than uh, the applied force. So the static friction is going to be mu s mg minus the p. We expect to have 0 0.4, 2.5 times 9.8 minus the p now is 12. So we're going to have. 2.5 times 9.8 minus 10 or minus 12 times 0 0.4 so I'm getting 5 newtons what would be our conclusion this is less than so the fs is less than the applied force therefore this object is going to be in motion if this object is going to be in motion we expect to have kinetic friction so we reverse and find now the static friction or the kinetic friction so we go there and find now the what? The kinetic friction. So we're going to say the kinetic friction is going to be mu k mg minus the p. So the mu k is 0 0.25. 2.5 is our mass. 9.8 is our g minus 12. So what will be our kinetic friction? 2.5 times 9.8 minus 12 times 0 0.25 so I'm getting my answer to be 3.123 newtons meaning I can round it off and say 3.13 newtons so this is going to be my friction force in that case so that is it for this uh, question, thank you for watching this video.